Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. I want to thank you for tuning in today. We finally wrapped up galaxy season a couple of weeks ago, and now it's time to move into some of the summer nebulae. One of the objects that has just eluded me for over a year is the Crescent Nebula. This is an incredible nebula, and I've tried to shoot it on multiple occasions and failed every time. But over the last several weeks, I've been working on collecting over nine hours of data, and I've got a great picture. I want you to stick around for just a moment, and I want to show you this picture that I've got of the Crescent Nebula and tell you a little bit more about this really fascinating object in the night sky. All right, I want to get right to the picture. Here is my picture of NGC 6888, also known as the Crescent Nebula. Some people have started calling it the Brain Nebula, and you can kind of see why, because it kind of does look like a brain. This is an exciting object to me, not only because it eluded me so bad last year. You cannot believe the frustration that I had last year in trying to get a picture of this nebula and failing every single time. So this year I was bound and determined right from the beginning of, of summer nebula season, I'm going to get the Crescent Nebula. So I'm really excited about this picture. But I also find this is a really interesting nebula. Let me kind of explain why. It's known as an emission nebula. And what that means is that it this gas is being ionized by a local star. And the star that's ionizing the gas here is this particular star right here, which I'm going to tell you about in more in just a couple of moments. But if I go over to Stellarium for a second, just to kind of orient us in the night sky, I'm looking toward the east northeast. There are three stars that kind of help you find the Crescent Nebula Vega, Altair, and Deneb sort of form a triangle. They're really easy stars to find. If you go out at night and look towards the north, northeast, you're going to find um, this the, these three stars pretty quickly. Once you've found them, if you come from Deneb and just work your way to the right, you're going to come to the star Seder. And then if you just go from Seder, kind of continue up and to the right, you're going to run into the Crescent Nebula. Now, I'll tell you a little bit more about this region here in a few minutes, but one of the problems that you face here is this is kind of looking in towards the Milky Way. And because of that, there are just a tremendous number of stars and a lot of gas in this region, which makes it a really interesting place to, to photograph because, you know, you've got lots of stuff to look at. It also makes it a little bit difficult. I'll tell you about that in a moment. But let's go back over here and, and learn a little bit about the Crescent Nebula. This gas has been expelled from this star. Now, this is what's known. This star is known as Wolf Rayet 136. Wolf Rayet is a classification of stars. The first of type, the first examples of these types of stars were discovered back in 1867 by Charles Wolf and George Rayet. The operative word when you're thinking about a Wolf Rayet class star is extreme. They are extremely hot, first of all. The surface temperature of this particular star is estimated to be about 70,000 Kelvin. Now, that's in comparison to our own sun, which is only about 5,700 Kelvin. So you can see right away, this is an extremely hot star. It's also extremely bright. Uh, Wolf Ray at 136 is about 600,000 times brighter than our own sun. It's also extremely large and massive. Now, back earlier in its lifestyle, this star is estimated to have been a, had a mass of around 30 times that of our sun. But somewhere between 120,000 and 240,000 years ago, this star let out a burp. Basically, what happened was it ran out of hydrogen. And when it ran out of hydrogen, it can no longer you know, hold uh, in the pressures, and it burped out all of this material that you see around it. All of this nebula here has been burped out by this star here. Now, the remaining material in the star 
was dense enough that it collapsed back in on itself and it began to fuse helium and other heavier elements. It kind of gave this star a second life. Now, what's interesting is the shock waves being sent out by this new fusion is traveling faster than the gas that it was burped out. So this gas that got burped out is expanding somewhere. The estimate that I saw was somewhere around 80 kilometers per second. But the shock waves are moving out much, much faster, probably closer to the speed of sound. And what you end up with is this really interesting bow wave, but also all of these little ripples and filaments. All of that is created by that shock wave being thrown out. And it forms this amazing object. Now, someday, I don't know how many you know years from now, this star will run out of helium and hydro or helium and heavier metals, and it's going to explode in a supernova. And um, and so that's just kind of giving an idea. I think that makes it a really fascinating object. Now, photographing this object presented its own challenges. And part of the reason why is this area has so many stars and just so much nebulosity around it. A lot of the nebulosity is not even really related necessarily to the Crescent Nebula. It's just you're looking in towards the center of our galaxy. Let me show you what I mean. If I go over here to my AstroPixel processor, this was the original stacked image that came out. Now, you'll notice it's kind of green, and the reason for that is, is I shoot with a CMOS, a Keller CMOS camera, a ZWO183MC Pro, and it has two green, um, uh, two green uh, elements for every red and blue. And so what I have to do is I have to process out some of that green, which isn't all that hard. I'll show you how I do that in just a moment. But I stack 312 light frames, 40 flat frames, 40 darks, 40 dark flats, and this is what I've got. But look how many stars are in this picture. There are so many stars and so much material in it that it really detracts away from the nebula. So I really ran into a problem. I must have processed the, this data over and over and over again, but I finally found a great tool, a great set of actions called Photochemy's Star Tools. Um, you can find this website, just go to photochemy'sstartools.weebly.com. Uh, and I bought both of these sets, and it, it has some incredible tools in them. And let me show you just really quickly three tools that I used to make this picture. The first thing that I did was reduce the number of stars. I wanted to get rid of some of the stars. And there's a lot of ways you can do that. But if I just go over here, what I did was I ran, um, first of all, I ran this star select for star reduction extra three. All I did was highlight this, press um, the, the, uh, play se uh, selection, it ran through the action, selected the stars. Then I came up and plus pressed on uh, star reduction, extra three hit play. And it removed all of those smaller distracting stars and sort of got to where I'm at right here in this picture. The next thing that I did was I wanted to get rid of some of that green, so I ran this reduce green hue. I think I ran medium. And that got rid of all of that. You remember that green? See how this kind of has this greenish tint to it? Well, look here. It got rid of all of that. Then I went up and ran one other thing. I ran color boost medium. And that sort of beefed up all of the color in the picture. Then all I had to do to finish this, this image was to go up to filter camera raw and over in camera raw i did the things that i normally do i ran over i pulled up the saturation and vibrance a little bit um, i also ran a luminance and and color noise reductions also played around to get it to get these little darker reds i went over here to the hsl adjustments and just sort of adjusted this but that's all I did to get it. I'm telling you, if you have problems, if you're shooting in this region, and by the way, you should be. 
If I go back over here, look at how many incredible objects are here. Um, next week, I'm going to zoom in here and show you. This is the Tulip Nebula. Same problem. Tremendous number of stars. I'm going to show you next week a great picture of that that I'm working on. I've been collecting data on it. But also, if you're going to shoot uh, something like the uh, North American Nebula, the Pelican Nebula, all have the same problem. A lot of gas and tremendous number of stars. I really encourage you, go check out Photochemy's um, star tools. They're great help. I, by the way, I'm not sponsored by that. I don't even know who, who makes those. Great tool. Help me produce this picture. Listen, if you like my astronomy pictures, do me a favor. Go down right underneath this video, click on subscribe, then like the video, and then please share it with your friends and help me to spread the news. Next week, we're going to come back, and again, I'm going to zoom over here, and I'm going to show you, we're going to zoom in on the Tulip Nebula, and I'm going to capture this really, really cool nebula. So I hope you join me next week. I hope you like this picture. Thanks for tuning in. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.